Good evening and welcome to our longest night worship service at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church and our first outdoor in-person service. Tomorrow is scientifically the literal longest night of what feels like the metaphorical longest year. <laughs> but tonight is a night for us to be together in the dark. If we admit it, uh, so often the darkness scares us. Darkness is our nightmare. We've been taught to fear it, to avoid it, to keep the lights on, to think happy thoughts, to pretend everything's all right, and to not go into that dark place. Yet we are here tonight in the dark place because God created light and dark, day and night and said both are good. To fear darkness is to miss what we can see there, that we can't see clearly anywhere else. So here we are, we are in the dark. Will you say that with me? Here we are, we are, we are in, in the, the dark. dark. We are here to acknowledge we are in the dark about so many things. We have so many unanswered questions. We have so much fear and sorrow we can't make sense of, tucked away in secret places. And for some of us, we have fresh grief that's raw and feels unending. Here we are. We, we are, are in, in the, the dark. dark. And God is with us. We are not alone. So we can hear in this night an invitation to not run so quickly to the bright, shiny objects, so to easy answers and loud, well-lit rooms. The sacred darkness makes room for all who, all, all who we are, for our laments and longings, our confessions and our cries, this darkness can help us see what we cannot see in the light. This darkness, this dark and holy night can perhaps even be a night where dreams are dreamed. Hope can be born. Here we are. We are, we are in, in the dark. dark. And, and God, God is with us. us. We, we are not alone. Tonight, we will be participating in the long-standing biblical tradition of lament, the practice of mourning for all that's wrong and crying out to God and with God to make things right. Yes, with God. One of the things we learn from scripture is that God also laments. The prophet Ezekiel tells us that God has a scroll filled with God's own handwritten words of grief and sorrow. So we do not lament alone. As we wait and wait and wait for God as and, and for what's broken to be made whole again, sometimes that wait seems so long, too long. And we feel like the writer of Psalm 22 who cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Throughout worship, we want to offer you the space for lament and prayer. Scriptures and music will guide us through this time. One of the things we learn from reading the Psalms and the prophets is that we don't have to protect God from our questions and cries. Our prayers don't have to be neat. They don't have to be nice. And we don't have to hold anything back. In this time of prayer, we'll be inviting you to remember what's been lost or hurt this past year. To help us mourn the things in our own lives and our world that can't be easily repaired or replaced. We'll also have a little musical refrain following our moments of silence. So let us begin. We grieve as well the loss of even being able to grieve in the way 
we have known before. We cry out because it's so easy to lose hope. In this moment of silence, we invite you to lift up your limits for the lives lost this year. Hear these words from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you utterly forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I harbor sorrow in my soul, grief in my heart day after day? God, you dream of a world where we can all be together in body and spirit to share meals and laughter and embraces. So we cry out to you because that has not been our reality this year. We weep for the loss of relationships, for the loss of routine and normality, and the ability to be physically together. We weep even for the loss of trust that the world is a safe, good place. We are in turmoil and peace seems like just a memory. In this moment of silence, we invite you to lift up your laments for the loss of all those things we used to depend on and expect.
Hear these words from Jeremiah 8. No healing, only grief. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people all across the land. O oh God, you dream of a world where there's mercy and kindness and justice and joy and enough to go around. So we must weep tonight for all the lives lost and hurt because of racism and injustice and the fear of strangers and difference in this country. The list, the list of names is long and somehow still keeps growing. In this moment of silence, we invite you to lift up your laments for the victims of the fear and hatred greed and exclusion that continues to devastate our country and our world. be a sign of hope. Let us be your arms of love. Let us be the ones that say there is another way. Let us be a sign of hope. Let us be your arms of love. Let us be the ones that say there is another way. Let us be a sign of hope. Let us be the arms of love. Let us be the ones that say there is another way. We are waiting for. 
hear these words from Jeremiah 31. A voice heard in Ramah. Lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her child, for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Oh God, you dream of a world where wrongs are acknowledged and righted and restoration is possible. So tonight we must cry out to you and confess that we have too often ignored the wrongs in our country, our neighborhoods, our own hearts. But our eyes have been opened wider this year and what we see hurts. It hurts and it's hard to confront what's broken within us and around us and to find the courage to make amends and make things right. Hear our prayers and forgive us. In this moment of silence, we invite you to lift up your confessions and prayers for forgiveness and change. Hear these words from Psalm 102. God, listen, listen to my prayer. Listen to the pain in my cries. Don't turn your back on me just when I need you so desperately. Pay attention, this is a cry for help. Night is 
It's time to dream fierce dreams Like Mary did Brave dreams Like Joseph did No dreams Like Jesus did Cause those who dream change everything Those who dream change We have gathered our torn hopes and our ragged laments. Together our laments become something else. God weaves them together into something beautiful and strong, reminding us of God's unending love, a love that can't be canceled, a love that never fails. As we read in Romans 8, neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as we wait through all our dark nights, we can remember God's immense and unfailing love for each of us and for this whole aching world, a love born in Christ on Christmas. Let us pray. O oh God of big dreams, O oh God of big love, we look for you in this darkness of our despair, of our denial, of our disappointments. Even as we weep, we wait and hope. I look toward Bethlehem. Help us whether we can say you see you clearly or not to follow you and to live your dreams your fierce brave life and joy giving dreams tonight and always amen now go trusting that in this darkness even now seeds are growing hope is being born and new dreams are being dreamed Go in the embrace of the God of powerful love, the Christ of humanness and vulnerability, and the spirit that is always, always with us and for us. Amen. away.